I don't even know really where to start with how to describe this record. Being is probably the darkest place that this band's ever experienced, ever. And that's what made such, that's what made the record. If we weren't in the place that we were at that time, this record wouldn't exist. And the first record was fun. This one was com complete hate. And I listen to it now and it actually scares me. But I love it. I love it more than anything. Now get your middle fucking fingers in the fucking air! to me what I represent in vision is that it was going to be the darkest I could become without being arrested locked up divorced uh, have my kids taken away from me abandoned any of those sort of philosophies that will go with making real art I'm killing everybody Now he's all behind his back and shit. He's on it.
we're gonna do my man here. Frame right here. In the back. So I'm with your body. You don't get a lot of major spots. So with that thing, it sounds like a Mac truck. A masterpiece. Touch that shit out. Balls. Iowa is an example of how we succeeded and failed on so many fucking levels. It's the darkest fucking album I've ever heard. It's gross. It's thick. It's brutal. It's heavy as shit. It's the fucking, like, it, it's the only album I've ever heard where you can wear it like a skin. You can wear it like fucking clothes. You put them on like fucking hunting boots. It's disgustingly fucking heavy and dark and everything that we were feeling and everything that we were doing went into that album i mean every chemical every fucking drop of every insane thing that we were feeling and hurting about went into that album it, it's it's to this day the darkest period of my fucking life and if i hadn't been able to go there it would not sound nearly as real or as visceral as it was supposed to Thank you. 
three. It is MTV2 Rock. Paul and Joey of Slipknot join us. They'll join us all week long. They got a CD out. It's called Iowa. Probably should go out and buy it. See? See? You guys are a tough interview. Not because you're not the sweetest guys in the world. You guys are really nice guys, but I have no idea what you're thinking when I'm talking to you. I you said that a, last time. I can't get a facial expression out of you. You said the exact same did thing I? last time. Yes, you did. Well, Face, Gizma. Huh? Think you fucking know what you're like getting? We'll see. There's a burrow right there. It's in the bus. What do you need for it? <laughs> I think to understand the Iowa record and the Iowa cycle, you need to know what happened on the first record and the first record cycle just to have a a reference point on what we went through um the record cycle f for the first record was horrifying um new band trying to make it um just imagine yourself and eight other people being shoved into one tour bus taken all over the world literally drug all over the world with no money, no cell phone, no computers, fighting just to stay alive, um, hiding whatever alcohol you could find in your bunk to make sure that you got some, you know, when, when the whole band on the rider gets one 12 pack of beer for nine guys. It was war. It was war with food. It was war with everything. And the shows were war, especially. You couldn't s sit sit around um you couldn't you didn't want to be that guy you had to go as hard as you could all the time and the music made it a lot easier to do that obviously there were certain times though when when we were sick hungry tired didn't want to play but we always did and we always did it absolutely as hard as possible and then you get start getting noticed and then the le record label starts coming around, seeing the shows. And at this point, at least for myself, I didn't, I didn't know if we were a big band, if we were, you know, just a flash in the pan. And all of a sudden, some more attention and more little cool things started to happen in our lives and getting to go to places that we never would be able to get to go before. Um, meeting certain people, you're like, whoa, that person wants to see our band. That's... You know that's pretty crazy and um there was this and this builds up to this record label kid in europe i guarantee he's not working for the industry anymore um he came up to me and he's like man if all we got to do for this next record is write three weight and bleeds and you know everything's going to be great you know and i was just like what like this is what this is what's coming at us the whole time too now the money and everything's starting to come in and people are like wow this this band is really going to do it so we better hurry up and get get the cash out of them before it ends because who would think a nine person band's ever going to stick together and um so i think that's where the iowa hate and the iowa angst comes from is, is from everybody wanting us to do exactly what we didn't want to do so therefore we just threw up the big middle finger in the air and and made iowa
at the end of recording the album, there was like, I was going to fly to England because my grandpa was sick. I mean, I had to fly in there anyways, but he, uh, we had like two or three days left, you know, and uh, he ended up passing away. So I went in the studio. I'm just like, turn it on, you know, turn the mic on. And just let it go. Like, that's the, uh, that's the shit that was, uh, the screaming in the, in the beginning of the album, you know. I guess that kind of set the pace for that one. <laughs> so everything, everything after that, yeah, just got crazy. Don't, no, don't put it there because I guess my ear.
Oh, this ring keeps helping him get untangled. Yeah, you need me, Paul? Inside Jalalabad. Joe? Yeah. Saw it. He fucked it. You've caught me, look. I'm nicking Paul's plectrums to take home to give to my friends. You know, they've got slip knot written on them. <laughs> You'll be wondering where they've gone, and I've got them. And you ain't gonna find out, because I'm gonna take them all, everyone. Polly was just unassuming. He was so fucking gifted musically that, I mean, even the subtle stuff, like, I remember, it was on Metabolic, I, I remember we were working on it and something just wasn't sounding right to Polly. And uh, he, he suggested maybe just moving it a half a step, just this one little piece in the music, moving it half a step down. And it gave it such a different balance, a different vibe. And it was genius. I mean, it was the first time that I'd ever, like he just, he had such a great overview for music and yet such a, a, a great ear for just subtle nuances, man. Just little things, moving it around, trying different positions, you know? I mean, just, I mean, just that little slide and the song made so much more sense. I, I just, I'd never, I, I mean, everything, like all the exposure that I'd had to people writing music and whatnot was so basic until then, man. You come up with a riff, you, you, you know, two and two equals four, and you got a song. And yet he heard so much different shit. He taught me a lot about writing music. He taught me a lot about what to listen for. He taught me about, you know, it's like you can't just look at it, the overview. You gotta listen for the details. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta fucking get into it. And he just had a, he just had such a gift for that. And, um, the great thing was, is like when it came to, when it came to, when he was playing, he had no ego, man. He would, he could lock in with the riff and then he could lay back, you know, he could lay, he could lock in and bounce back and forth between the riff and the drums, you know, and, and, and supply that backbeat, supply that, that natural bass that, uh, you know, a lot of technical players are very reluctant to do.
I don't give a fuck. Hey guys, I just want to say one thing. It's been a pleasure working. recording of the Iowa record. It was kind of a dark time for me anyways, and it, it was the first full record that I worked, you know, with the band on. Uh, basically, when we got done touring on the first, the first album cycle, we finished Tattoo the Earth, and like, you know, less than, you know, less than three or four days of being home, Paul was already calling me up to, uh, you know, to go over to uh, his brother Tony's basement where him and Joey were working on, uh, you know, we're already working on some of the demo stuff for the for the Iowa record. So essentially, you know, not even having a break from the first album cycle, I was already over with Paul and Joey working in Tony's basement on, you know, on the Iowa record. And, you know, we did that for a few weeks, like every night we'd get together, you know, and play for a few hours through all the tunes that we had at, the, at that point. And, uh, you know, we knew we were gonna do it with Ross and uh, we found out we were gonna do it at Sound City, which was, um, you know, pretty epic studio in, in the Valley in LA. Um, you know, some great records have been done there. Uh, I was shacked up with Chris. We were split in a place and, uh, you know, it, it was fun. I, you know, I had my Xbox set up and when I wasn't playing guitar or doing any of that shit, I was, uh, you know, partying because <laughs> that's uh, what we were doing at the time.
you to confess that you're terrible. I'll come take a shower with the clown. I'll come take a shower with the clown. To me, like the biggest thing uh, during that time that was the most influential on all of us was the business stuff. It was people who were meddling, people who were fractioning our band off into separate little groups, people who were creating conflicts where there didn't need to be any. Uh, you know, and I, I was that was dark. That was it was a fucking terrible time. You know. Once, once you have a band and, and you start having some success, the people who are, you know, were the people that they were are no longer, you know, and uh, that's usually for the worst, you know. I mean, it's it's easy to inflate people's egos. All of a sudden, you got people around you telling you the best, whatever. You're the great, you know. It's how much do you listen to that? How much do you pay attention to it? You know, and what does it do to you? You know, it's all very poisoning. The entire industry is very poisoning. It takes like. You know, what was once fairly innocent, decent people and can turn them into absolute monsters, you know? So, I mean, that's something that uh, was taking place at that point. Not that anybody turned into a monster, but people being affected, being affected by all of the shit that's outside, you know, coming in on them. And uh, all of a sudden you've got more friends than you've ever had. You know, everybody wants to be your buddy girls who wouldn't fucking spit on you if your hair was on fire or, you know, asking for phone number, things like that. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty disgusting, really. You know, in, in terms of getting to see a darker side of humanity that you never got to see as just being a civilian that went to work every day, you know?
they're cool. They're bla they're blazing, man. They're fucking kicking ass. Can't get out of. Hold on. At this point, I'll, I'll sum it up like this, just with, with what I have to say, is I love my eight brothers. There's no one like them. There's no one that can replace them. There's, there's no prosthetic for that, not to, not, not to heal, heal a, a hurt heart. But Paul's still here. Iowa's still here. It's all here. And we're forging ahead. We're going on tour. And like, Iowa will live on forever. It's one of the, actually, I will say it, it's the heaviest and best metal record of all time. Done. Iowa!
Okay.
Well. I didn't really want to have anything to do with this, but when you make an album like Iowa, who are you trying to kid? Same for kids. It's art. Don't you ever fucking forget it.